we don't want to be the ones to harvest that last whale, and that's well seen through our own actions. For years, the Makah Tribal Nation has fought to preserve their right to hunt whales, first in court, then through an administrative process. Environmental groups have fought back, trying to end the Makah's practice of whaling. In the coming weeks, we expect the government to make the final decision. A waiver floated roughly one year ago would allow the Makah people to harvest 12 whales over six years. Box 13's Matthew Smith traveled Nia Bay to talk to the Makah tribal chairman as red tape continues to block a practice that stretches back to a time before the United States existed. If we're not able to, to whale, things are going to change. You know, the ocean is, is all we have as people. Water is essential to all life, but to the Makah tribe, or the Quidditchat people, there's much more to it. In totems and symbols, the stories told how the first whale came to the Makah people by a great thunderbird, ending famine and giving them knowledge to hunt. For thousands of years, the Makah have called this coast home. The archaeological digs prove it. As Babylonians, Persians, and Romans came and went, the Makah continued. And the sea always provided. Do you fear that disconnecting from this whaling tradition, if this were to stop, that you would go the way of these civilizations? That is part of the fear. You know, it, it would. Um, there would be a change that would be so significant because of that connection to the ocean. Chairman Timothy Green is near his home, talking with me in Wyatch. Or Wa'atch, as we say in our own language. This site is one of the traditional villages of the Makah. As Green explains it, the band they're under now is akin to asking a Christian to never step foot in church. Whaling was culture, food. Heck, it created massive trade. But by the early 20th century, the whaling industry was commercialized, booming. Uh, whale populations were plummeting. Save the whales! Long before the Save the Whales slogans even got off the ground, the Macaw, fearful that the gray whale would go extinct, stopped whaling altogether. That was a very difficult decision um, in our history. Whaling is, is such a vital part of our, of our culture, of our spiritual beliefs. It helped create a, a society and a, and a structure that um, provided for its people. So as the gray whale was delisted, taken off the endangered species list in 1994, the macabre returned to their roots, ultimately harvesting this whale in 1999. The skeleton, now in the Macaw Cultural and Research Center, is impressive to see. The tools used, incredible, but it also serves as a reminder. This was the last whale the macaw were allowed to hunt. The legal restrictions in court cases are hard to unwind, but put simply, the Macaw now needed a permit to hunt whales, but the paperwork to get that permit didn't even exist. We've been in this process for 20 years now. It's a bureaucratic nightmare for the Macaw, who, per the 1855 Treaty of Nia Bay, have a right to whale in these waters. It says a lot about the U.S. government and its bureaucracy and, and it, the institution that it's been operating under that it can't even honor a simple treaty with a small indigenous tribe. That's been frustrating, dealing with that bureaucracy of moving through an administrative process. Hundreds of people for and against the Macaw have sounded off during recent public comment periods. Uh, groups like Sea Shepherd have loudly fought the idea of any whaling, telling me their opposition to whaling is categorical and uncompromising, adding Sea Shepherd opposes the intentional killing of cetaceans no matter the circumstances. Uh, surprisingly, after decades of fight, the Macaw have actually won over some of the groups once fighting them, the Sierra Club among them, telling Noah this is a treaty right, and the Sierra Club firmly supports treaty rights. As the sun sets, Chairman Green reminds me of his nation's history, how past leaders noted, the sea is my country. They wanted to preserve this, not the views, but a way of life, a reverence to all things, including the very whales they hunt. That's our intention, is to, is to be here forever.
I don't like even using that word killed, but that's what people understand because to us, it's not about the killing of an animal. It's a gift, it's a blessing, and it comes with a lot of responsibility you know, for our people to, to care for it. Perhaps one of the most interesting parts of all this, according to Chairman Green, the International Whaling Commission has already set the number of whales that can be taken by both the macaw and a Russian indigenous group. In other words, some of these whales are already being hunted, or at least that's how Green puts it. We will keep an eye on what NOAA does and what their decision making is. We have been checking in and they say that this summer they'll have a decision, meaning we could be weeks, even days away from learning more. Matthew Smith. Fox 13 News.